Welcome to another installment of Locked In Vlog. Locked In Video, Locked In Productions, I don't know, please comment below, I still need a name for this. So basically I think the format that I really do like since the last vlog that you've seen is trying to use this again as a platform to show off new products that I have coming in that I'm initially testing to get more feedback and questions for my following reviews, as well as maybe I'll go on a ride, we'll see how this day goes and if I can get as much done as I want. In this video, I'm going to be taking apart a little bit of my Cobalt Warhawk and redoing the handlebar setup yet again for who knows how many I've had on there now to test out the new kitchen sink handlebars from Redshift Sports with the loop. So thankfully Redshift helps support this channel with products whenever I do need it because I do really love their stem and seat posts they have. When these came out, I asked for a set. I finally got some and finally have the time to get around. I wanted to put these on earlier, but I got these right before the San Francisco to LA trip and I didn't want to change the handlebar setup last minute, even though I think I really would have liked having this loop out front. Then this is gonna be the only handlebar that comes with accessories and I don't mean bar tape. So if you don't know, they have three different add-on products for this bar. You're gonna get the really long bar tape. That's just basically gonna be extra long so you can also wrap the loop. Then you're gonna have your drop grips and your top grips. This is basically gonna give you an ergonomic grip like you would have on a flat bar, kind of like the ergon grips that some mountain bikers use, but to put that on your handlebar to make it just a little bit more comfortable for multiple positions on the bar. So this is gonna be a little bit more complicated of a setup because I need to see how you put those grips on and tape the bars themselves. So you're gonna be coming with me as well as, so you've recently seen my Gravel King SK Plus review video. Now, I got a lot of questions and I did mention comparing those to the Ventures. I haven't ridden the Ventures in quite a while, so I think I'm just gonna swap those 50C Ventures back on my bike, ride them for the next few weeks, and then do a comparison video between those two tires because I think those are ones that get compared the most in the industry and that'll give me kind of just a nice back-to-back -back feel between the two and what do I really notice. So, hope you like that. Please make sure to give this video a like if you want to see that comparison video. It really does help with the channel. So I'll give you a few of the tips on what I do when I typically set up new bars because honestly that's the most finite thing that I probably adjust the most. And that even though I've been fitted and I know my rough position that I like, you still always tweak it depending on every single bar, especially with gravel bars and how different they are than a traditional road bar, which is what I initially got fitted on. So I'm going to go pull down the Warhawk, grab some coffee, and we're going to tear this thing apart. So we will be taking off the Richie Beacon bars, which I do have a review for, so if you want to see that, check out the channel. I'll put a link in the description below. really do like these bars, and this handlebar is going to be definitely less aggressive as far as the flare goes, but it is going to add a little bit more reach and drop, so I'm going to see what that's going to feel like after riding these bars and really liking the shallow drop. But, as mentioned, and no, this isn't whiskey, this is my cold brew. We're going to be having some cold brew this morning. And if you didn't know, uh, if you drink cold brew in a locked in slow but look pro mug, which is linked in the description below, uh, guaranteed wattage gain while installing your handlebars. Guaranteed, it's just science. And as far as sizing goes, I didn't go as wide. They only come in a 44, a 47, and a 50. I decided to go a little bit narrower since I've been riding a 46 centimeter bar for a while to see if I'd like this because again, having that TT position, I figured you know, I'd be using this possibly a little bit more, so I might want to have just a little bit narrower position on the hoods. So we're going to see how that feels. I do like that this hoop is nice and big so that your front mount, if you run a computer, is still fit in here um, instead of having to, you know, run something out front on the hoop itself. So I will be doing a full review of these bars in the weeks to come, so make sure to turn notifications on. So the plan of attack is to reuse the bar tape that's currently on here, so I might not tape the hoop if I don't have any spare. This bar tape's definitely gone through its paces, and it's like my budget bar tape I recommend to everybody. But I just, again, want to reuse it before committing to using the really long bar tape to wrap everything finally. So ideally what I'll do is take this out on a ride or two while getting my initial impressions, and that way I'm not burning a brand new set of bar tape which can potentially tear or anything like that and waste, you know, a brand new set. So I'm going to be waiting to put this on, but this will be mentioned in my final review, what I think of this compared to my budget $17 tape from Amazon, <laughs> and if it's long enough. So I was really dumb. You want to keep your bars kind of stiff so you can take your bar tape off easier, and then I'm going to mark my shifter hood position on here, so if I ever do use these bars again, they're automatically set up. A little pro tip in case you do want to try swapping bars.
right, so phase one completed. Now, these bars are actually pretty easy to set up. And just like I mentioned in a previous video, I'm a big traditionalist as far as handlebar setup. I like to set the level of the shift hood and the drop bar itself at the same level initially and then tweak slightly. So what I initially like doing is going outside in my patio, leaning against a wall, kind of like I was leaning against my storage unit cube thing here, and basically grab the drops. And that's the first thing you want to set up. You want to get that drop angle perfect because that is something that obviously you're going to lock down or lock in to place on your stem, then your hoods obviously have a lot of room for adjustment up and down. So that's what you really want to look for. I like to look for when you're in the drop position, a nice straight wrist angle so that it's not, you know, you're not bent up forward or bent back. You want a nice smooth transition to keep as minimal amount of strain and pressure off your wrists and then play around with the hood angle and then you have to obviously play with the tip in. So now what I'm going to do is again, go kind of redial that in. Basically what I do is I just ride around the neighborhood and double check things after. I only tape down that one little section of cabling so I can easily move the drop bar or the levers up and down. And I'll basically just ride around with my, my five Newton meter torque key with the bit that I need for my stem so I can instantly change bar angle on the road if need be. So that I think is the first time I've ever like dialed in a handlebar in like that short of time. Just these set up super easy. Don't know why, can't really explain it, but super happy with it. The hood position feels perfect. I kind of just was riding by some cars, looked at my reflection in the mirror to see how my wrist angle looked because obviously I can't see myself, but it looked nice and straight. I think I set these up perfect like the first time and I think I'm ready to wrap them for good. So now let's look into those grips and see how to install those. So as you can see, it's all wrapped up. I'm gonna go out and just basically set the drop bar grip angle and then swap out the tires, but it does take some good amount of time. Uh, in the full review that'll be coming in the next few weeks, I will be going into basically my full thoughts, but comment below if you have any questions that you want me to answer in the full review. Let's start the grip angle adjustment and tubeless montage. <laughs> All right, so that turned into obviously a tire swap, a bike clean, drivetrain clean, and everything else. So of the Redshift bar, I've now tweaked it a little bit more. It's honestly very cool. I actually like the kind of naked bar shape to it. Now I wanted to try with all the grips on there just to get the full experience for the review. And essentially all those same angles and features are gonna be there with or without them. And I did actually like the naked bar shape initially a lot and it does av obviously add a layer of complexity for putting these grips on. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically try these out and see what I think. I may actually eventually just run this without any of the extra grips for half of the review. I think that's what I'm, I'm probably gonna end up doing and just run the really long bar tape. I don't know how it'll work without the grips, if it'll still do the hoop. So we'll find that out. I think I'm just gonna save that bar tape for running them naked and then go from there. So comment below if you want me to see me try it a different configuration. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'll be making sure to make another vlog about what my initial impressions are of the Ventures, going back to them from the Gravel King SKs, as well as what I think initially of this bar 
so I can get more feedback from you as well going forward. So make sure to turn notifications on and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can make sure to see those videos and all the other ones I put out every single week. You can help support the channel via Spreadshirt or Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links for all four things are in the description below. And lastly, thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Hey!